Welcome back to The Legal Reef, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're giving you the full breakdown on the SHARE Act, otherwise known as the Sportsman's Heritage and Recreational Enhancement Act. I wonder why it's called the SHARE Act. Daniel Defense makes some of the highest quality semi-automatic rifles on the planet, whether it's the V7, the ISR, or even the DD5-308, you can't go wrong. And from now until October 15th, you'll get a free Yeti Hopper Flip 8 cooler worth 200 bucks with the purchase of any Daniel Defense firearm. To learn more, check out the link in the video description below. The SHARE Act is an omnibus bill that has a variety of pro-gun provisions and was recently voted out of committee. The bill was waiting to be scheduled to be brought to a vote. I say was because given the recent tragedy in Las Vegas, the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, has been quoted as saying there's no scheduled plan to vote on the bill. For those that don't know, an omnibus bill is a bill that is accepted by a single vote in the legislature, but has a variety of different measures in it that can be related or cover a diverse range of topics. As gun owners, there are several sections of the SHARE Act that should capture your attention. Specifically, the provisions pertaining to the interstate transportation of firearms and ammunition, the Lawful Purpose and Self-Defense Act, the Recreational Land Self-Defense Act, and the Hearing Protection Act. Interstate transportation of firearms is a topic that you guys ask about all the time on the show. Currently, the law allows for a person to lawfully transport their firearm from a location that they can lawfully possess or carry the firearm to another location where they can lawfully possess or carry the firearm. As long as that firearm is unloaded and the firearm or ammunition is not readily accessible, that means in the trunk, assuming you have one. We also know that states like New York, New Jersey, etc. love to arrest people for violating their laws when they're simply just passing through. One of the provisions in the SHARE Act would modify the existing law as it pertains to the interstate transportation of firearms and adds a provision for the transportation of ammo that is lawful in the start and end destination. More importantly, the term transport is defined to include staying in temporary lodging overnight, stopping for food, fuel, vehicle maintenance, an emergency, medical treatment, and any other activity incidental to the transport. Even better, if an individual is prosecuted and shows that they complied with the law and successfully asserts the affirmative defense, they're entitled to attorney's fees, which is a huge deal. Lawyers aren't cheap. It also allows for a person to sue the government and recover attorney's fees and damages if they're deprived of any right, privilege, or immunity secured by the proposed section, along with sections 926B and 926C, which you probably better know as LEOSA. We covered that topic in a previous video, and you can find that down in the description below. As you probably remember during the Obama administration, Lord knows I do, ATF attempted to enter into rulemaking to reclassify M855, more commonly known as Green Tip 556 ammo, as armor-piercing ammunition. Fortunately, enough people got involved with the process that it became a non-issue. Interestingly, there is a section in the SHARE Act that seeks to address the classification of armor-piercing ammunition by looking to the manufacturer's intent. This would eliminate the ability of the ATF to declare armor-piercing ammunition simply because it can be used in both a rifle and a handgun. The section also completely eliminates 922R compliance, which means we would lose the opportunity to film one of the most highly requested topics here on The Legal Brief. It also provides a provision which would eliminate the ATF's ability to arbitrarily reclassify shotguns and large caliber rifles as destructive devices. The SHARE Act also contains a provision which would prevent the Secretary of the Army from creating or enforcing any regulation that prohibits a person from possessing a firearm at a water resources development project. You probably better know these as areas that the Army Corps of Engineers operate out of. And as you probably know the SHARE Act for, it also provides an updated and better drafted version of the Hearing Protection Act. Specifically, it revises the definition of a silencer to mean any device for silencing, muffling, or diminishing the report of a portable firearm, including the keystone part of such a device. The bill defines the term keystone part as an externally visible part of a silencer without which a device capable of silencing, muffling, or diminishing the report of a portable firearm cannot be assembled. This would be like the tube of a silencer, but specifically excludes any interchangeable parts designed to mount a silencer to a firearm. Since we've covered this topic a number of times on the show, we won't beat this one to death. As you can see, the SHARE Act is much more than just a better version of the HPA. 
We've talked about interstate travel becoming safer for those passing through states who make it a mission to punish gun owners. We see that the manufacturer's intent would be the criteria for determining whether ammunition is considered to be armor piercing. More areas would be opened up for people to exercise their Second Amendment rights, and of course, we would be able to purchase silencers just like any other firearm. As a whole, the bill touches on a number of issues that Congress needs to step in to protect. So what can you do to help make this a reality? Well, there's two things. First, pick up the phone and call your representative. Demand that they support this important bill and that you want it to be voted on. It will go nowhere without you, the constituent, demanding it be supported and voted on. Be firm, but be polite. Explain your position to the person on the other side, or simply just tell them who you are, that you support the bill, and you want your representative to do the same. Second, pick up the phone again and do the exact same thing, only this time call Speaker Paul Ryan's office. Tell his office you want to know where the representatives stand on the issue, and the only way to do that is to have it voted on. This is a bill that we as gun owners need to push for. Sitting on the sidelines this time, not an option. Did you like this video? Make sure you share it with your friends to show the SHARE Act is about more than just silencers. Don't forget to hit that like button, and if you haven't subscribed already, you better ring that bell. Make sure to check out my website, adamkraut.com, and as always, thanks for watching. The shirts worn in today's episode of The Legal Brief have been provided by Patriot Patch. Click the link in the description to learn more.